Welcome to Jazz After Dark, everybody. How's it going? Tonight we are enjoying an old... Fa I don't know why it looks like that, by the way. We got the stuff going on there. Ooh, fancy. Uh, we've got an old-fashioned here, and the old-fashioned is... I, I don't know if this is any good or not. Uh, the Giant Texas Bourbon. Uh, there you go. I just thought the bottle looked good, and it is very woody. Like, it's like you're licking the inside of a charred oak barrel. Just so you know, like if you like that stuff and you don't want the sweetness and all that, uh, that's that's your one. Uh, it's not bad. I made an old fashioned out of it so I can make it a little sweeter. Just just to be honest, but eh, you know, mm. it's just charred wood. Like you're going on that side. You will not taste it and go. Well, I don't know what he's talking about. No, it'll be exactly that. Hey, uh, here's a question. I've been getting this a lot. Will the fact that the Fed funds rate is coming down now? Will that actually start money moving from money market funds, which we've spent a long time there making over 5%, right? Will that cause people to move the money back into the stock market? So we want to look at the data, get a little kind of geeky around that and see what's going on there. Now, you know, the first rate cutting, uh, the first rate cut of the cycle happened September 18th, 18th, 19th, somewhere in there. And so we've got the rates coming down, right? So we got that first half a point cut. And we're expected to see about a quarter point cut every single meeting until we get to what's called the terminal rate, which right now is set at th uh, three and a quarter, three and a half, right? So just a quarter point, quarter point. Here's what that looks like, actually. So we go over to a slide. What I'm uh, posting here is the, in the light blue, is the actual Fed funds target rate, right? So I see where it went back down to essentially nothing. That's on the right axis. You got essentially zero. We were at zero to zero and a quarter. Remember, there's an upper range and a lower range. And then in blue, we have the amount of money that's moved into money market funds. So it can be any money market fund. They're tracked as a whole by the Federal Reserve. And so as rates go down, uh, down here, rates go down to next to nothing. Uh, we had money market funds actually move uh, from two trillion to five point seven trillion, all the way up now to almost eight trillion dollars that is in money market funds. And so you get where we're going with this, right? The theory is there's eight now. There's more than eight trillion in money market funds. Well, if the rates are coming down from let's say money market funds paid about a 5.125 rate. Now they're paying about 4.875, a touch above or below, depending on the fund. And so the thought is people would say, oh, well, I'm not happy with that money. I'm going to go back into the stock market and take full on risk that I can make more than 4.875 or whatever it is. Well, uh, not accurate, guys. It's just not an accurate assumption there. So uh, let's take a look at some of the history. So when we have the Fed cutting rates for the first time in the start of a new cycle, remember, we're assuming they're going to continue and continue. Um, here's what the forward 12 month fund flow looks like. And don't let this trip you up at all. We're just saying over the next 12 months, do we have a greater percentage of dollars coming into a money market fund, an equity fund, a bond fund, or do we have a greater percentage going out? What we're looking for is do people take money out of money market funds here and put them into what's called equity funds or S&P funds or large cap funds, you know what I'm saying, stock market related funds. Well, what we find is that if we look 12 months out, I broke it into two parts because you're going to see this a lot. Um, there are Fed cuts that started and that went us or took us into a recession. And then there are Fed fund cuts where they just got it right, soft landing, so to speak. So. 12 months after there were five different occurrences since 1984 where the Fed started cutting rates and more money came in to money market funds. If there was a recession, even more money came into money market funds. And that makes sense, right? People fleeing from the stock market, assuming that the worst is upon us, right? Now that's money market funds. So there's no argument, at least since 1984, to say that Fed, fund, uh, Fed cuts will produce a flow out from money market funds and into the stock market, which I know a lot of you are looking for, like, hey, that's going to cause a big rally because it's $8 trillion, right? Uh, well, that's not the case. And in the stock world or the equity side of things, market-related funds, um, 12 months after a first cut, we do see a flow into the overall equity funds, large cap, small cap, all that stuff. Uh, and if there's a recession, of course, you see a flee from the market. 
and most likely into money market funds. There's really nothing to, exciting to report about bond funds either. As rates start to cut, yeah, you still see a positive net flow into bond funds. And if there is a recession, that explains that as well. People want the safety of bonds. So that's the first part. Uh, does that look cool? Or I mean, I don't know how I did that. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I, I, I did not turn anything on, but I'm kind of digging it. Mm. All right. So if you're expecting the market to see a flow of money, which would assumingly be bullish, that is coming from money market funds into the equity, uh, overall equity market, eh, you're probably looking at the wrong statistic to, to force that belief. Now, oh, I want to also point out one other thing. What percentage of you guys out there have your money in cash or have your money in the stock market? So you've got your total investable net worth, right? What percentage are you keeping off to the side? Emergency funds are included in this, just your total investable net worth. It's, it's not the Fed's problem that you've decided to save some of it for a car or save some of it in case of an emergency or for that baby that's coming up or for college or whatever. Nope, we're looking at everything here. Well, whatever your answer is, the Fed tracks that highly accurately, by the way, and here's where we stand. So currently, we have the most amount of households exposed to the U.S. stock market. It's tied for a record, at least since World War II. So we're already exposed to the stock market, right? Yeah, there's $8 trillion in cash, but where is that cash? Look, that's only 15% of our total allocation inside of an individual's household. So we're at a historic low of cash. It would be different if we found ourselves here where we had a low exposure to the market, a high exposure to cash. What would that mean? That if the markets started supporting themselves and you got excited to invest in the markets, well, you have a lot of cash to dump into the market and maybe fuel a rally times that by hundreds of millions, right? Uh, of people and accounts. And that's what you get. The level of debt, surprisingly, is only at 16%. Now that, to me, that's a little high for a personal debt rate. Um, I'm not sure I would want my debt rate to be that high, but you know, whatever. Uh, everybody's different. We're still near a relative low. So we have very low cash saved, which could be dangerous. We're in the market more than we have been. And we have very little debt relative to our total investable assets or available assets. So how does that go back to this and say, yeah, well, there's just no reason that there would be a large outflow from a money market fund into the stock market, which would cause this whole rally because number one, it hasn't done that in the past. And number two, we already don't have a lot of cash on the sidelines relative to history, right? So maybe not the most exciting gathering or get together here for us, but um, just by the way, since the September 18th Fed uh, rate cut, you see over in the equity side of things, $4 billion has gone into equity funds. So positive $4 billion in flows, meaning money came out, money came in, the net result was positive $4 billion. But we have a positive $169 billion going into money market funds after the Fed cut rates. So that flow that we talked about over here is currently still holding true. It's not 10%, but we're holding true to a positive flow into money market funds, even though the Fed has cut rates. So think about that for a little bit. You got used to seeing 5.125, maybe 5.25 where you're at. And now you're staring at something with a four in front of it. And you want, you want to make the switch? Mm, I don't know. I, wanna, I want you to think about that or work with an advisor, work with us if you're one of our clients. I want to talk through that with you because should you went from taking no risk for 4.875% blended, let's call it 4.9%. And now you want to take full on risk in the stock market at all time highs right before the elections. And well, we have earnings season coming up, right? Let's think about this a little bit. How many dollars are you missing out on at 4.9 versus 5.12 or whatever? So careful there. I don't think a lot of you think that, but I have got that question quite a bit. I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me and my giant Texas bourbon whiskey. Uh, well, in this case, old fashioned. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, those of you who want to put a little hair on your chest, that's the one you're going to go with. And I'm from Texas. I can say that. Born in Richardson, Texas, man. However, 
that is more manly than I am. <laughs> All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you learned something. A little bit different way to look at it. Not the most exciting, but uh, I hope you learned something there and uh, we'll be back for more. Adios.